I think that's where a lot of people are so they're focused on more if it is it synthetic or is it organic. It's never what the actual product is. And I think that's where carbon is fascinating for a lot of people because they start to realize that these inputs are so important to the plant itself and that they're able to do it in a way that they're used to with bottled nutrients, so to speak. So it's not so intimidating like some of the organic you know, inputs are for a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, the thing with salts um, and, and really, I guess you could say like conventional fertilizers that are based on technology that, that maybe has been around for a couple of decades now. You know, the, the thing that goes on there is we didn't really understand the importance of carbon as an element for plant growth before all of this other stuff was figured out. And so what ended up happening is, you know, salt based conventional fertilizers got scaled up. And we started putting a bunch of these ingredients on plants that don't really make up a majority of their biomass. I mean, all the NPK, CalMag, silica, et cetera, that makes up less than 10% of what the plant is. And the remainder is water and carbon. And obviously, when you dehydrate the plants, you're left with mostly carbon by weight. It could be over 50% of the dry weight of the plant. So there's been a little bit of a paradigm shift as the science has advanced and researchers have been looking at you know, gee, what is it that gives plants their ability to resist disease pressures or to taste better or to be more nutrient dense or just more flavorful? Maybe there's better smells that come out of it, stronger aromatics. Uh, the answer 100% of the time is carbon. There's, there's carbon-based molecules that plants are in the business of making and then exporting out to various sites like trichome heads, for example. Uh, and that's really where they accumulate. And a lot of times people that grow crops, regardless of what they are, they're looking for carbon-based molecules. So it's important to figure out how to feed that to the plants. Historically, the way to do it is to create a sealed flowering room and have an environment that's controlled so you can regulate the amount of CO2 levels that go into it. Because as I'm sure you can imagine, like on an open field outside, you can't necessarily increase the concentration of CO2 to the plants. It's in the air, so it's going to get dispersed. So that's been the real struggle is we can put the NPK, et cetera, inside of the water. And we can give that to plants in varying quantities, a little bit more, a little bit less. But how do we deliver more carbon to the plants? You know, the interface has always been through the air, through a gaseous interaction. But um, I think it's wise to have people start thinking about how you can feed carbon in the feed water for plants, because that can make a huge difference overall.